In this video, I'll teach you absolutely everything you need to know about using the intersect with operator inside of Bubble. To put this feature simply, it just allows you to recognize if items from two separate lists overlap with each other. Now in my guide today, I'll show you a real world example of when and why you should use this feature. I'll then go on to explain how you can set it up correctly and how you can avoid any errors along the way. Now I apologize in advance if I sound a bit repetitive throughout this tutorial, but look, this is definitely a more advanced feature inside of Bubble, so I wanted to make sure I explained everything in as much detail as I could. Let's open up our Bubble editor and we can jump right into it. Within our tutorial today, I wanted to start by just showing you a real world use case of when you'd need to use the intersect with operator. So within my tutorial today, I've created this search results page, which is just displaying a list of restaurants within a repeating group. So let's say if you're searching for some restaurants and you want to refine these by a certain search criteria, I've also built out this filter menu on the left hand side here. Now in a moment, of course, I'm going to show you how I've set up my database as well as this page. But for now, I just wanted to show you an example of how this functions. So that way we have a good idea of what we're going to be working towards. So for every single restaurant within my repeating group, what you'll see is that they have a list of categories. So right now I can see that Kirkwood's Cafe is listed as the Thai, Japanese and Burgers category. And on a search results page, if you had something like a drop down menu, which was searching through a list of these categories, what you'd find is that you're only able to select one category at a time. So let's say I wanted to search for all of the Thai restaurants. It's going to filter my repeating group down and it's going to show me any restaurant that contains the category of Thai. So I've got two options here. But the problem that we have with this single drop down menu is that we can only select one option. What happens if instead of just searching for Thai restaurants, I wanted to search for Thai as well as Italian? I couldn't do that within a single drop down menu. So that's why today I've added a multi drop down menu. And look, this searches through all the exact same categories, but as the name would suggest, I can select from more than one option. So let's say I want to search for all of the restaurants that have the category of Thai but I also want to search for restaurants that also have the category of Italian. Now right here is where the intersect with operator has kicked into place. So in my example, I was able to search for any of the restaurants that contain at least one of these two categories, which is why we now have Luigi's Italian also displaying within my search. So if you're trying to build a feature like this inside a bubble, this is the tutorial for you. And so what I'm going to do right now is open up my bubble editor and show you exactly how this is built and how we can recreate it from scratch. So let's head over into Bubble here. And what I've done is I've created a duplicate version of this page. Now I've just taken the time to color code this page so that way you can see where all of my elements lie. But essentially on the left hand side I have my filter menu and then on the right hand side I have my repeating group. But before I show you how any of this is designed, what I'd like to do is open up my database and show you how I've created two separate lists that I need to filter by. So over in my data tab, under my data types, you'll see I have this data type known as a restaurant. Now, of course, these were the restaurants that you saw displayed within my repeating group. Now, each restaurant has some pretty basic fields. There's the address, there's the description, there's a featured image, and then there's the name of the restaurant. But I also have this field here known as the categories. And this is linked to a list of option sets. So if I open up my option sets menu, what I've done is I've created an option set here, which contains a list of all of these individual categories. Now, if you're not familiar with option sets, I'm not going to explain that within this tutorial today. I do have another existing tutorial, which will help you understand option sets, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Instead, I just want to focus on how this is set up. So within this option set list, as I just mentioned, this is a list of choices. And of course, if I just jump back to my restaurant data type, a restaurant can have multiple categories. So this is a list of that list of option sets. And so how can we make the intersect with operator work in our favor today? And so because this is a list of options, it's not going to bode well with a single drop down menu. So over in my filters group here, I've added just a standard drop down menu, which you saw before. And of course, this is searching through a list of all of my categories that sit inside of my option sets. But as I'd shown you in our example, we only have the ability to filter our restaurants by one specific category. And that's not what we want. So today what I've done is I've installed a multi drop down menu. And of course that is a free plugin built by Bubble. And as you can see within this multi drop down, it has the exact same list of dynamic choices as my first drop down. It's essentially just searching through all of the options within my option set list. 
And I think the last thing I should quickly just point out is how I've set up the data source of my repeating group. So if I double click on my repeating group here and open up my data source, at this point in time, I've just added in two constraints, which just cater to these two input fields within my filters group. So as I'd shown you in my example before, there was this constraint, which is filtering the categories by one option in my drop down menu. And then I had this additional constraint, which is only going to display restaurants whenever they're within a certain proximity of this search box here. But that one's not really important. I'm not going to focus on that today. And so right now it begs the question of how we can use the intersect with operator to filter between two lists. So at this point in time, what I'd like to do is actually remove this constraint here. And I want to display all of the restaurants within my database that contain at least one of the categories selected from my multi dropdown menu. So if I was to add a new constraint here, what I could do is reference all of the categories within each restaurant. But this is where we're going to run straight into a roadblock. As you'll see here, when it comes to all of these operators, we're quite restricted in the choices that we have. The only thing we could reference is the contains option, which we've already done for our drop down menu at the top here. Now the contains option only allows you to select from one option, not a list of options. And so this is most likely where you're at within your own bubble build today and why you're watching this tutorial. What we need to do is create some sort of constraint, which is going to allow us to filter through a list of options. And so in order to do this, we need to use what's called an advanced filter inside of bubble. So if I just delete this constraint here, close this menu and select the more option after my original search in my data source. If I then type in the word filtered, what this is going to allow us to do is create an additional filter. Now, when you're creating an additional filter on your existing search here, you have this little hidden ability inside of bubble to use what's known as an advanced filter. So if you literally just type in the word advanced, you'll see this option pop up here. Now an advanced filter, as the name would suggest, allows you to refine your list by some additional options that you don't have on your initial search. So I'm just going to quickly digress here and explain how searches work inside of bubble. So when you perform a search as I've already done in my data source, what you're essentially doing is sending a message to a server that bubble has created for you that stores all of your data. And you're saying, hey, this is the information I need to display. Can you please send that back? Then once Bubble sees that search, it gathers all of that information and it sends it back to your user as they load your app. Now, as I just mentioned, because that's storing that on a server, this is what's known as server side loading inside of software development. But there's also another term that you may have heard of if you've ever worked in the software development space, and that is what's known as client side loading. So in software development, there's both a server and then there's a client. The client in simple terms is just referring to the user's device. So let's say if you're logged into my app that I've created and you're a user, and while you're using my app, I want to display a list of restaurants to you. As it stands, my initial search here would send a request to the database or the server, and it would then return that information to you. But whenever you use an additional filter on top of your existing search, this filters this on the client side, which is the user's own device. So in this case, if you're the user logged in, this search is going to be performed with the computational power of your own device. So your own desktop, your laptop, or your phone, whatever you're using to view my app in. And so that's the difference between a server and a client. A server, as the name would suggest, is the server, and the client is the end user's device. Now, something that you need to keep in mind when it comes to both the server and the client is that the server is a dedicated device that's used to load lots of information very quickly. So searches on a server are much faster. Whereas with a client's device, most common laptops or phones, although they are pretty performant, are nowhere near as fast as loading things from a server. So you just need to remember that any additional filters you add here that are filtered on the client side are going to be a little bit slower than the initial search. And I feel like I just went on a bit of a tangent there, but this is important to remember. So when I'm building inside a bubble, I try and avoid using these additional filters wherever possible. But when it comes to intersecting a list of items, this is something that we can't avoid. And so I'm more than happy to do it in this situation. Now, once we've opened up our client side filter here, so this is our advanced filter. What I want to do is take the existing list of restaurants that have already been returned from my existing search and I want to tell Bubble that, hey, if those restaurants have at least one category that also matches the categories selected from this list, I want those restaurants to be shown. 
So over on the right hand side of our page here, we have one list, which is the list of restaurants. Then on the left hand side, we have another list, which is our list of categories. And so this is where the concept of intersecting those lists comes into play. So what I'm gonna do is reference, first of all, this restaurant, its list of categories. So that's our first list on the right hand side. And if I scroll right down to the bottom, you're gonna see the option that we've been looking for today. And this is known as the intersect width. And if I intersect this with the multi dropdown list of categories on my page, what this essentially means is the bubble's gonna combine both of those lists together. So it's gonna pull all the categories from each restaurant in my first list, and then it's gonna pull all of the categories selected from my multi dropdown menu. It's then going to overlap these with each other or intersect them together, and it's just going to recognize if there's any options that overlap. So for instance, if there's a restaurant with the categories Italian, Thai, and burgers, and then in our multi dropdown menu, if someone selected Italian, Chinese, and burgers, our restaurant actually has two categories that overlap with the categories that someone selected. So it would in fact intersect with the list of categories. But let's say in another example, we have a restaurant where the category is just ribs. And then in our multi dropdown menu, someone once again selects the Italian, Thai and Chinese option. These two lists would not overlap. Therefore, they do not intersect with each other. And so at this point in time, we've pretty much built out this entire expression. However, if I was to click away, what you'll see is that this is not going to validate. Right now, there's an error. And if I select on my issue checker here, what I can see is that we have an error here that just tells us that the returned value here should equal yes, no, but right now this is a list of items. And so the way this intersect with operator works inside of Bubble is that as I mentioned, it's gonna comb through both lists, overlap them, and it's then going to tell us that yes, a restaurant does overlap with our list of categories, or no, a restaurant does not overlap with our list of categories. And so what we need to do is make sure that this filter here returns a yes, no value. And the way in which we can do that is by just referencing if the count of all of the categories that do overlap is not, and then we're just gonna type in the number zero. So this means that when we overlap both our restaurant categories and the categories selected from our dropdown menu, if between these two lists, there is at least one category that is matched, that restaurant will now be displayed. And if there's no categories, it will not be shown. If I then click away, this will validate perfectly. And then similar to our initial search, I don't know if you saw this, but I'm gonna tick this option to ignore empty constraints here, just so that way when there's no value selected from our multi dropdown menu here, this additional filter is not applied. I'm then gonna to choose to close this here. I'm gonna run a preview of my page. And what you might notice right now is that there's currently no restaurants being displayed by default. So something's definitely not right there. And the reason for that is because unfortunately inside a bubble, when you add an additional filter that leverages the advanced option, Bubble's unable to actually register this option to ignore the empty constraints. So this will not work, but don't worry, I'll show you a workaround to that in a moment. What I am interested in doing though, is just showing you a quick preview of how this is going to work first. So let's say we wanna search for all of the restaurants that contain the Thai category, as well as the Italian category. What you'll see is that between these three restaurants here, our first restaurant contains Thai, but it does not contain Italian. So right now it has one category that intersects with both of these categories. Then for our second restaurant, it's the exact same thing. It has the Italian category, although it doesn't have the Thai category. So once again, it has at least one option in this list and the same applies to our third restaurant. But let's say if I even refine this list by adding the Japanese category, what you'll see is that our first restaurant now has two categories that overlap with the options selected from our menu. Now, before I wrap up this tutorial, I just wanna quickly show you how we can fix this option where there's no restaurants being displayed by default on our page. So if we quickly just jump back into Bubble here, one thing I just wanna point out is that this additional filter on the client side has been added onto our main data source. So as soon as the page is loaded, Bubble's going to show all of the restaurants that fit this exact search here, as well as the additional filter. Now, as I mentioned, when you're using an advanced filter, the ignore empty constraints option will not work. So that just means that even though there's no value inside of this multi-select field, Bubble's going to show no restaurants because it doesn't have any categories to compare to a restaurant's categories. So a workaround for this is that we could just create a condition 
that recognizes that only when a value is selected from this multi dropdown field, we should then update the data source and add this additional filter to it. So we're gonna head over to our conditional tab for our repeating group. We're gonna define a condition and we're just gonna reference our multi dropdown categories. And we're just going to identify when it's value, when the count of categories selected is in fact greater than zero, meaning at least one category has been selected. What we're then gonna do is update our data source here. And instead of having to rebuild this data source from scratch, we can just jump over to our appearance tab, right click, copy this expression. So it's gonna copy this exact data source here. We'll then jump over to our conditional tab, right click and paste this in. And if I open up my additional filter, as you'll see, we now have our advanced filter here. And if I open up my initial search here, what I might do is actually delete this constraint, which is just referencing our single dropdown menu. But if I then jump back over to my appearance tab for my original data source, what I'm gonna need to do is actually remove this client side filter because by default, I don't want this influencing the list of restaurants that are displayed. So if I now run another preview of this page here, what you're gonna see is that right away, all of our restaurants are being shown, but it's only when I actually select a category from our multi dropdown menu here that the advanced filter with the intersect with is going to be applied. Now look, that is absolutely everything I wanted to cover within this tutorial today. When it comes to using the intersect with operator, it is quite an advanced feature inside of Bubble. So please don't stress if you found this confusing in any way. Feel free to take the time to pause this tutorial and rewatch anything. Or I'd even recommend just jumping on the Bubble forum because there's plenty of great examples of how you can use this feature within a whole bunch of different scenarios. And just like that, you now know how to overlap two separate lists and uncover any matching items within them. As I mentioned earlier in this tutorial, this was definitely a more advanced feature inside of Bubble. So if you've made it this far, I'm sure you've just leveled up with a new skill. If you found this video useful, I'd always recommend hitting that subscribe button on my channel so that way you can be the first to know whenever I drop a new Bubble tutorial. In the meantime though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this specific video and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.